In English, we have a very limited vocabulary to describe how the body feels from the inside. We feel tingly, or we feel heavy. There are not that many words, and nothing really systematic. This is where the Buddha's teachings on the elements are helpful. They give a systematic way of categorizing the sensations we have in the body, and they give us a sense of what we can do with them. Because it's with this teaching on elements, or what's probably a better way of translating the word dhatu is properties, you get a very clear sense of how much your present input shapes the way you experience the body in an immediate, very visceral way of learning how to use that present input to balance things out, make the body a better place to settle down, easier to settle down in. The basic system is six. There's earth, water, fire, wind, space, and consciousness. It sounds like medieval chemistry. But it's better to think of these as qualities that you notice. You're just looking at how the body feels from the inside, categorizing the sensations. There's, there's sensations of heaviness. That would be earth. Heaviness or solidity. Water would be cool. Fire is, of course, warm. Wind is the motion back and forth. Space is the feelings of emptiness. And consciousness is the element that's aware of all these things. The theory of these properties is that they get provoked. In other words, as they get emphasized, as some incident strengthens them or kicks them into action, they get stronger and stronger. In the text, they talk about external elements getting ele elephants, elements getting provoked, ele external properties getting provoked, floods, of course, of the water element getting provoked. Huge fires are the fire element. Extreme heat is also the fire element. Extreme winds, the wind element. Interestingly, they also attributed earthquakes to the wind element. Of course, it's not the wind in the air, it's motion down in the earth. Apparently, earth was the only one that wasn't provo provocable, on the external level at least. And whatever we may think of these as ways of describing external events, it's a very useful way of looking at the internal events, the sensation of the body from within. When they talked about causes for disease, giddiness or lightheadedness, that's too much wind element. The wind element has been provoked. Fever, of course, is the fire element being provoked. A feeling of lethargy or heaviness in your limbs, that's the earth element. These are things you can play with in your meditation. And that's where the teaching really becomes useful, because it allows you to see exactly how much the way you focus on the body has an impact on how you perceive the body, how you actually sense the body. We think of sensation as being primary, but there are conscious decisions that are made that precede the sensation. We look at the teaching on dependent arising. Sankhana, fabrication, is way down there prior to the sensations you feel in terms of form, feeling, and so forth. And so, how are you going to fabricate the body? The patterns of tension in the body, sometimes that's too much earth element. You can think of the breath, and this is why we start with the breath, because it's the element that works through tension. Wherever there's a sense of tension, focus on it and see if you can get a sense of motion going there. The potential for motion is there, simply that the perception that caused that tension has blocked it. 
And so you can consciously decide that you're going to perceive motion there. You have a chance for it to happen. And the potential for motion, the potential for movement through that part of your nervous system will get strengthened, will get aroused, which is probably a better way of trans translating the word that I just translated as provoked. It gets aroused. And the breath you find can move through that sense of blockage. Well, there are times when you're feeling giddy. You can think of the earth element to settle things down, when there's just too much frenetic energy in the body. Think of your bones being made out of iron. Wherever you have a sense of solidity in the body, focus on that and try to magnify it. And you feel that your choice of the image you're using, the purpose for the focus, will really affect the way you start sensing that part of the body and how you can then take that sensation, spread it out, and connect it with other parts of other sensations of solidity in the body. And the potential for solidity is always there. When you're feeling depressed and down, you want to think of lighter things. When you're hot, you want to think of the water element. Focus on whatever sensations in the body are cooler than the others. And just really f keep your focus right there and just think water, water, or cool, cool, cool. And you'll find that all of a sudden that other cool sensations in the body will appear to your awareness. The potential for them was waiting, simply that they're waiting for that element of present intention to show up. And again, when you're feeling cold, you can think of warmth. There'll be some part of the body that's warm. Focus in on it and then think of the warmth staying there and then spreading from there to other parts of the body where other warm sensations will get aroused, will get awakened. You can do this at any stage in the concentration, although it's most effective when the breath is still. At that point, the body feels like a, a cloud of mist, with little points of sensation. And each point of sensation has the potential to be any one of these four elements. When it's reduced to that, what the French would call pointillism, it's a lot easier to, simply with a thought, emphasize either the heaviness or the lightness, the movement, the warmth or the coolness of those sensation sensation potentials you've got there. And this way you accomplish two things at once. On the one hand, you balance out the body. Whichever one sensation feels too oppressive, you can Think of the opposing sensation and balance it out. And secondly, you start seeing the role of present intention in your awareness, in your experience of the present, in a very visceral way. When things go very still and very balanced in terms of those four elements, So that you do just have this mist of potentials that can go in any direction. What you could also do, though, is focus on the space between the little points. You realize that that space is boundless. It goes through the body and out in all directions. And just think that, infinite space. Stay with the sensation of infinite space that comes along with the perception. The potential for it is always there. It's simply that with a perception you arouse it. And it's a very pleasant state to get in. Things seem a lot less solid, a lot less oppressive. You don't feel so trapped in the body. My teacher had a student an old woman who was practicing meditation with him. and This was at the point where he was begin getting ready to leave Vodasokaram. And so when he left, she had to practice on her own for quite a while. And there was one evening when she was sitting with a group meditating there at Vodasokaram, and this voice came to her as she was meditating and said, you're going to die tonight.
she was a little taken aback, but then she reminded herself, oh, I'm going to die. The best way to die is meditating. So she just sat there and watched, see what would happen if the body dies, what would it be like? And there was an actual sensation of the body beginning to fall apart. All the various elements were going their separate ways, she said. It was like a house on fire. There's no place in the body that you could focus your awareness and have any sense of comfort at all. And so for a moment she felt lost. And then she thought, well, there's the space element. So she focused in on the space element. And all that sense of the house on fire suddenly disappeared. A very strong sense of infinite space. There was always the potential to go back to the body. This is something you'll notice when you're at this point in your meditation. There are the spots that could create a potential for the form of the body, but you choose not to focus on them. Instead, you focus on the sense of space in between and all around. And there's a sense of boundlessness that goes with that. When she came out of meditation, well, she hadn't died. She was still alive. But she'd learned an important lesson. And when things get really bad in the body, you can always go to space. And even though that's not awakening and it's not the, the unconditioned, it's a lot better than <clears throat> being in a lot of turmoil along with the elements of the body. So this is a useful way of thinking. It also makes it easier to get to that sense of simply awareness itself that you read so much about in the Taijans. Once you're with infinite space and you're really solidly there, you can just drop that perception of space and see what's left. Well, there'll be a perception of knowing, knowing, knowing that takes its place. You don't have to ask knowing what, there's just knowing, awareness, awareness, knowing, knowing. And once you've got everything divided up into properties like this, then, then you've got the raw materials for gaining insight. So even though the, the terms of analysis may seem strange, once you get a sense, a visceral sense of what they're referring to, they're extremely useful. Both for the purposes of giving the mind a good place to settle down in stillness and concentration in the present moment, and for gaining insight into the way that perception shapes your experience of the body, shapes your experience of what's going on here in the present moment, and seeing how fabricated that all is. You've got potentials coming in from past karma, but you've also got this element of present choice, and it's extremely clear when you analyze things in these terms. When I first went to stay with a John Fu, he had me memorize a John Lee's Divine Mantra. Six passages, each dealing with the different elements. And for a long time it seemed very foreign to me, until one night as I was chan chanting the passage on the element of consciousness, I realized, well, what's this talking about? This, this awareness, it's right here. It was like this huge iceberg in my heart suddenly melted that I wasn't dealing with some outside foreign frame of thinking, but it was something that was extremely direct and visceral, immediate, right here and now. It was that when I began, then I began to get a sense of why he'd asked me to chant the chant, why he wanted us to, all of his students, to think about their present experience in these terms. So keep this mode of analysis in mind. Try to get some sense of it as you put it to use, and you'll find that it's extremely useful in the practice. Because as with all the Buddhist teachings, the importance of the teaching is what you do with it and what it does for you. and helping to gain insight into how stress and suffering are created in the present moment and how you don't have to do it.
if you pay attention, if you work at these skills.